Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, we're here at the at Google here in San Francisco, um, and you are joining us for the inaugural session of Case Soup, uh, the Case Foundation's new series that's going to focus on some of the big issues and big ideas that are important to us at the Case Foundation. Um, and we hope to engage and challenge viewers like you to participate in the discussion. So uh, you'll see below the screen that you can add some thoughts and comments and questions via uh, the, the chat functionality. You can also um, you can tweet us. Um, just make sure that you use the, the hashtag case soup. Um, and then also, if, if you're old school, that's fine too. Send us an email via case soup at casefoundation.org. And um, throughout the next hour, we're going to share with you some of the best secrets to creating successful nonprofit videos. Um, I am joined today with two fabulous people, Ramya Rag Raghavan um, of YouTube and Basho Mosco of Flip Video. Um, so, over the course of the next hour, if you want to know how you can find skilled videographers through YouTube's Video uh, Volunteers program or get free products from Flip Video through their Flip for Good program, you are tuned into the right place. Um, on that note, we were actually, uh, the three of us were, were very pleased, um, well, the Case Foundation along with YouTube, C3 Communications, Flip Video, and N10 participated this past month in, in something called the Do Good or Video, Nonprofit Video Awards. More than 750 nonprofit um, videos were submitted over the course of the, of the last month. Um, the three of us served a, on, as judges, um, on, on a panel of judges. We've narrowed those down to the top 16 along with, with um, some other folks. And um, we are going to encourage you to vote for your favorites um, by visiting the YouTube uh, Do Gooder page. And we'll get that up on the screen for you so that you can know exactly where to go. Um, while it's too late to submit your videos for this year, we, we really hope that this is going, you know, that this session is going to help get you, or give you a jump start on um, getting your video together and, and submitting for next year's Do Gooder Awards. So, um, but definitely take a look at some of the best um, nonprofit video awards. I think I was really blown away by the high quality and, and production value of many of the, um, the videos that were submitted. So um, some of those tips and tricks will, will come out today. Um, but without further ado, I'd, I'd like to introduce first Ramia. Ramia is the nonprofits and activism manager at, uh, at YouTube, where she directs social change programming, um, including the YouTube nonprofits program and their video volunteers program, um, which was an initiative that was launched in 2009 to connect nonprofits and activists on the site. So um, she blogs regularly at citizentube.com, and um, I wanted Ramia to just spend a little bit of time telling us about nonprofit, um, the nonprofit video program at YouTube and um, what we should know about it, and we'll get into questions a little bit later. Yeah, that, that's a great intro, uh, Carrie. We launched the nonprofit program in 2007. Um, it's currently open in the US, the UK, Canada, and Australia with the goal of giving nonprofits the same um, premium features that uh, you know corporations may pay for or some of our uh, most active partners may have. Um, that includes things like a branded channel or longer video uploads. Um, more recently, um, we added functionality called the call to action overlay, which lets nonprofits drive action from their videos to external websites. So things like that that were really created with the nonprofit community in mind. And then more recently, um, our video volunteers program, also thinking about um, a need of nonprofits who can't create their own video, um, can they get other people on the site to make video for them? And re really creating those partnerships and then incentivizing them with promotion on the YouTube homepage for the ones who do it really well. Terrific. And then we're also here with Basho Mosco. Basho is the program manager of Flip for Good, which is the philanthropic program um, of uh, Flip Video. Um, Basho himself is a longtime filmmaker, um, and um, you know, and, and Flip Flip Video is really helping nonprofits and educational institutions use video to make the world a better place, which we love. Um, you're also a musician, a storyteller, and an educator. These, these are all great things, and I'm sure add a, a great deal to um, to your work at Flip. But can you tell us a little bit about Flip for Good and, and what's happening on your end right now? Sure. Thanks, Gary. Um, so yeah, I'm, as she said, I'm the program manager for Flip for Good. It's the philanthropic outreach for Flip Video. Um, we had it was announced at the Clinton Global Initiative in 2007 
um, that we would contribute uh, to the nonprofit sector through a matching program, and we offer two for one camcorders um, to nonprofit organizations that are approved. The application is online at flipvideospotlight.com. Um, and the idea really is that there's so many great things that nonprofit organizations are doing, so many great stories that are happening, um, so much that needs to be told that isn't getting out there. And um, this is the perfect tool to make that happen. Our real push is for nonprofits to share their story. Our tagline is share the story, change the world. And we want for those sh stories to be shared and think that the camcorder, the flip camcorder, is sort of the perfect tool for it because it's small, it fits in your pocket. Right. You can take it anywhere. It's high quality, the audio is good. And it allows um, video expression in places that normally you wouldn't see it. Now, also through our program, the two-for-one program, it makes it accessible to pretty much any nonprofit organization. So we've made a big push to democratize video, to make it so that um, from the smallest organization to the largest organization, they all have access to using video um, to make the world a better place. So I'm thrilled to be here and uh, excited to field some questions and offer whatever support that I can to the, to the viewers. Great. Terrific. Well, the um, questions have actually been, been streaming in a little bit via Twitter um, over the course of the last few days as, as we've been promoting. And um, so I wanted to start with, with this first question here. Um, why should I make videos about my nonprofit? What, what is the value? I think what we're seeing is that, um, gosh, YouTube has what? I was reading 1 billion videos per day are viewed on YouTube, which I just think is phenomenal. You were saying earlier at breakfast that, um, that you know, actually YouTube is the second um, most used searchable tool on, on the internet. So um, it's, it's pretty amazing. So what is the value in, in um, having nonprofits um, participate and, and have their presence on um, online and, and via video. Well, I'll, I'll take the first crack. Um, I think that, that video offers um, this amazing way to tell your, your nonprofit story. And, and video it, it is an incredibly valuable storytelling tool because it, it, it allows you to um, use audio and kind of visual effects to, to bring that story to life. So whether you're filming you know, civilians in Gaza or uh, telling those stories that may not be told very often or, um, you know, telling the story of your executive director's, you know, morning um, meeting. Sure. Um, these are things that, that take people um, into places that they, they, they don't go. And I think we, earlier we were talking about kind of that quality of pulling back the curtain and, and showing people um, exactly what your organization is all about. Absolutely. I would also argue that Video is becoming the communication tool. Like if you receive an email blast, one has a embed video and one is just a paragraph of text. Mm -hmm. I would say the majority of people are going to click right. on the video and not read through the entire text. It's it's a stage that we're coming to where video is the way that people are communicating with one another, and increasingly so, um, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, so we're going to hit a sort of. Uh, tipping point where video is going to be the main means for communicating and so to not for nonprofits not to embrace that is uh, I think they're missing a, a perfect opportunity to really inject themselves in a world that that's happening right now sure sure so what would you say are some of the easiest ways kind of the, the low-hanging fruit the ways that nonprofits can get started today or maybe tomorrow but <laughs> well, right I mean, off the bat. <laughs> between the two of us the uh, YouTube nonprofit channel is a great opportunity to get your videos viewed. I mean, it's uh, you've got this huge audience. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're one small organization in a huge field, but it, they've got incredible tools to get your videos up there. And Flip Video um, has onboard software, FlipShare software, that actually lives on the camcorder. So you can get two for one camcorders for your nonprofits, load up the software, go shoot a short piece that is inspiring about your organization instantly upload that to YouTube using your credentials and you know soup to nuts it's it's three hours you've got everything done mm -hmm. um, so I think the two tools that we sort of support are probably the quickest access to getting video online and and I would even take a step back though before you create um, your your videos and, and think about what are the goals you want to achieve with with video and really like whiteboard it out map mm -hmm. it out and, and, and figure out 
who's your audience, um, what are those goals, and then what kind of video um, is going to help me achieve those. So it might be a general awareness video, but it might be a training video, and it might be a, a thank you video to your donors. Um, so I think establishing that before you even pick up the camera is, is the first important step. That's, that's, a great, that's a great point. Yeah. And also, what videos do you like to watch? What videos is, are people watching? Mm -hmm. what, what do they like to see? Very rarely do you see people like 45 minute videos about a conference rising to the top of the charts sure. on YouTube. Unless it's like a, a TED kind right. of talk, which right. is extremely professionally done and, mm -hmm. and right. obviously um, high production value. High production value. So, so talking about some of those those high production value, um, there were some questions about whether or not it's actually worth um, making lower budget videos. I mean, some people, um, you know, simply can't afford to 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 go out and have highly produced videos. Um, Flipcam obviously is is a great tool to use, but is there is there the same kind of value in some of that raw, authentic footage um, that you get with the highly produced? And and can you tell us, you know, what the what the benefits are, how I they think, will? I think what you were saying before was <laughs> yeah, was I'm spot on. I'm totally biased on that. I think the raw footage is is invaluable. It's uh, Video gives an opportunity for a nonprofit to break down the barrier between the program that they're doing, who they're actually supporting with that programming, and the viewer who's often the supporter, the donor, the advocate. And when that viewer actually gets to be inside of the programming and see how either their dollars are being spent or how their support is being enacted, that's an invaluable piece of information. And I, I mean, we've had a lot of uh, videos come out of Haiti after the earthquake that were, you know, that happened the day after and people going through and looking at rubble and asking people how they were doing and saying, look, this is what we're doing. We're, we're, we're the World Food Program. This is the way that we're getting food in the hands of people. Your help makes a difference. Yep. And that happened, you know, soup to nuts, it was like one day out and the video was up online. And that activates your, your, your constituents. And, and I would also say, I mean, we were talking before about the fact that, you know, Flip creates an HD camera as well, which which I have. Um, and that, you know, I think I think HD and, and, and Basho says this as well, is gonna is the wave of the future. I mean, soon people aren't gonna say, Oh, that's an H D video, oh, that's a standard video. H D is gonna be standard. Right. So low budget video may not exist. It may be lower budget than like ten eighty P where, you know, you're shooting in like mm -hmm. amazing quality. Um, but I think that nonprofits, you know, are, are, are definitely going to be able to take advantage of cheap tools um, to create good video so that it doesn't have to be that grainy kind of mess. Sure. When I also want to bounce off on that in terms of low budget, because the tools are all sort of evening out in terms of even like expensive camera versus a flip cam quarter HD, it's about how you produce your film. You sure. Know? The, the framing and the storyboard and this way you tell your story and how you right. sort of weave that forward and so that doesn't um that's just experience and reading up and learning how to tell a story it doesn't you're not financially kept from producing a high quality right right no that's that's very very good um in terms of so actually we, we just we had a, a chat question a live chat question that, that came up so i want to go to that um it says please give us some ideas of compelling content so what are what are some of your favorite um, videos that, that nonprofits have produced? And and I'll just add, you know, if, if you were here at the top, you we, we mentioned that uh, we all participated in the the nonprofit Do Gooder Video Award contest, and um, that's certainly, I mean, there's some co really compelling content there to, to take a look at. Um, so I would encourage nonprofits who are looking to get inspired to, to check out some of those videos. But um, that was my pause to give you an extra second to, to think about what what are some of the the uh, most compelling videos you've seen um you know actually calling out a specific video <laughs> I, I, I can jump in i mean i think that I, I like videos that make the viewer not just a passive viewer but part of the video mm -hmm. in a way so um i've shown some of these before um but uh, there's the choose your own adventure style videos are really interesting to me. Um, there's one from the username is a different ending um, to prevent knife crime in the UK where you're watching the video and you feel like you're the one who's kind of the character in the video and then at the end of the video they ask you do you want to take the knife or do you not want to take the mm. knife and you make the decision so you click on one and it takes you to the next video and then you make more decisions as, and so right. you're actually a stakeholder. Kind of a choose your own adventure. In the video. Yeah. So I think that's an interesting approach. Um, 
I was talking about the Invisible Children videos before, very high quality, but um, a nice narrative throughout the whole series of mm -hmm. video. And then uh, animation, when done properly, I think is, is, is really fun and quirky way to... And I think, I mean, in terms of genre, I would sort of on the other side of that is I really like raw video mm -hmm. um, that is directly interacting with whoever you're, you're um, communicating with. I was talking about this this morning about... Um, the Organizing for America Obama's video came out yesterday and there's a scene just before he goes out to talk to the people and he's behind the curtain and someone looks like they've got like a shaky quick camera that they pulled out and he's like I'm really excited for this I want to thank you all for being here I'm about to go out and you know talk to this big group of people and this kind of makes you feel more intimately connected with whoever's going on I was talking about Tavis Smiley as well um, sort of his behind the scene videos. Mm -hmm. I also love Michael Franti does a video blog on his uh, YouTube channel that's like, I'm in Australia now and I'm walking down the street and I'm really excited about this next concert that I've got, which makes me as a fan feel more... Um, connected. Yeah, connected yeah. with what, what's right. happening. Right, no, that's that's great. Um, I want to I want to turn to fundraising. I think we've gotten a couple questions um, about whether or not videos can be used for fundraising. I know that um, now there are ways to embed um, fundraising and donation platforms into YouTube videos. Can you can you talk a little bit about that and what is the most effective way for for nonprofits to to use these tools um, to raise to raise money? You know, so that goes beyond just raising awareness. For yeah, so I think there there are a couple of different things that nonprofits can do. I mean, the most the most obvious example I have is that we have a tool now, um, two tools actually called, um, one's called the call to action overlay. Um, so people in the nonprofit program can embed this on their videos. And when some, it shows up, it pops up about um, one third of the way through your video. Um, you customize what it says and what website it could link to. Mm -hmm. And when somebody clicks on that overlay, they'll be transported to that donation website that you have dictated. Um, you can also do this through the annotations feature, which are kind of like pop-up videos um, and so when somebody clicks on that, again, they can go to your donation website. So you're actually driving donors to your site. Um, but then, you know, it, it really depends. I mean, I think there are strategies for making donors feel appreciated on YouTube. I've seen people um, actually call out the usernames or the, uh, of the people who have donated to kind of give them a little bit of recognition. Um, I've seen, you know, special um, messages that people send to their high-dollar donors, which mm -hmm. are, like, Hi, um, you know Angie. This is what we did with your money. Um, you can see this video to see that, and I think that's a, those are some so really very personalized, powerful, very personal, yeah. right? Yeah, and I think that in, in terms of that too, it's um, going back to what you were saying earlier about planning. It's it's really important to think of what are your fundraising goals and who are you going to. Is it like this a mass appeal to to um, just citizens? around the country? Is it is it U.S. specific? Is it California specific? Um, are you just going to your major donors? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that'll affect what kind of video you want to do. It, like Rami was saying, if it's, uh, if it's to your major donors, you may only have to make a, a two-minute polished video that includes the names of a couple of people in a few projects, and that's targeted at generating funds from a specific group of people. Mm -hmm. So I think the planning stage is really important in terms of how, how, do, you, how do you want to use video as a tool to get those dollars. It's sure. part of the campaign. It's not, I'm going to make a video and people are going to donate. Right, right. And I think that video has been used as a fundraising tool for ages, right? I mean, who hasn't seen that dinner party <laughs> fundraising video that you show at your annual banquet um, that is kind of like a highlight reel? Mm -hmm. But I think we're expanding that idea of, of that one video into different formats and different, um, for different audiences in different places. I think that's, that's great. Um, so we're 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 flipping around just a, a little bit, but I want to be um, responsive to the folks that are that are asking some really great questions. One of the questions that came up in chat a little bit earlier was very specific to flip um, and to the use of flip video. We wanted to know if there are any flip tips for audio. Um, that yeah, I guess the. Um, they asked if the, the camera is limiting in terms of quality of audio and, sure. and if there are any tips that you can share. Sure. Actually, it's a great sort of intro because flip video is, is it's good to embrace it as the tool for what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible for some things and it's not designed for other things. For example, if you're in a conference and you put a flip camcorder on a tripod at the back of a room with 100 people <laughs> and they're talking in the front, everyone's going to look microscopic and you're not going to get the audio. 
Um, if you want to capture the stories of a homeless family um, about that's just lost their home and you want to get sort of real life intimate connection with what they're doing, which actually a PBS station in I think St. Louis uh -huh. did that a couple months back, I can send the link. Um, they handed out camcorders to the family. The mother was actually interviewing the kids. The teenage daughter interviewed herself with the camcorder. You get a quality of footage in that sort of situation that you would never get with an arm, a shoulder-mounted camcorder, with the film crew, with lights and microphones and all of that. So mm -hmm. they're, they're for different circumstances. For nonprofit organizations, it's a great tool because it fits in your pocket. The things to remember are the microphone is right on the camcorder. So you're only going to pick up what's in sort of the direct range of it. Mm -hmm. If you're in a quiet room like this, you set it on a tripod, you're going to have a great interview. Everything is going to sound excellent. If you're out at a concert and you want to get some important footage, you're just going to have to get real close. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to write, get it right up in the person's face and ask them to speak clearly and say what they're trying to say. It's a different quality of footage, I think, is the main thing that I want to say, is that that clip from the, um, from the concert is still going to be great. If they're saying, hey, I'm having the time of my life, this is this concert for good is incredible, mm -hmm. you'll get that and you'll get the ambiance of everything going on. But it's not the same as having a lavalier mic and a big camera that's on the other side that you've sort of got this wide shot, but you can hear them perfectly and then you're zooming in. Right. So it's just a matter of, of um, embracing it as a tool that has constraints and really using it to the maximum of its ability and, and taking advantage of what it is great for. Great. Very helpful. Um, so another question that comes up all of the time is how do I get people to watch my video? Everybody talks about how they want their video to go viral. I mean, that's the goal of any video that you put out there. But what is that, you know, what, what's that tipping point? How do you get there? And, and what, are, what are some of the ways um, that you would, you would share with our viewers? <laughs> I think the first question you should ask yourself, which I think I'm almost scared to say because a lot of nonprofits don't want to ask it is, is my vid video worth watching? Right. Um, so content, uh, content is the first thing you should worry about. But say your video is worth watching, it's amazing, it's creative, it opens people's eyes to your cause in a way that no video ever has. Um, there are a few ways. I mean, one is, um, uh, Carrie mentioned our, uh, the, the YouTube search bar should be your best friend. <laughs> and so you should be thinking about ways that your video can turn up in search results. Um, you know, tagging your video very liberally, titling it appropriately. Um, I, I'm shocked at the number of, of nonprofit videos I see that in, contain no tags and no kind of metadata about their their video. Like that is the way that people are going to find your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then also, you know, m try to make it relevant to what's happening in the world. What are people going to be searching for? They're going to be searching for you know um, Haiti. You know, is there a tie you know that you can create? to your video around Haiti. Right. I'm not saying like, you know, tag your video Justin Timberlake because <laughs> people are gonna be searching for that. But I, I am saying that like, if you have a, an easy camera to use and you can shoot a quick spot about how your organization is helping out in Haiti and you know that's what people are searching for, I would do it. I would do it because it'll bring eyeballs to your channel. So I think search is, is, certainly, is certainly one way. I think also it's a, uh if you were going to have an event, how would you get people to come to your event? I think a video is sort of the same thing. If you have an email list of 100,000 people, after you've done the litmus test of is it worth watching, mm -hmm. which is a, it's a hard thing to, to address. You know, someone in the organization might have said, well, we made this great video. Have 25 people watch it. If people don't like it, it's maybe not something that you want to post right. to your you know 500,000 person email list. Right. But if it is, you have this use your direct channels you already know your constituents you already know the people that support you if you have a good video they'll share it with other people mm -hmm. so go to the people that you know to start with because that's a great base the other thing i would say just in, in terms of content is to make sure that that first 20 seconds of your video is so good like just brings them in really so, yeah. brings them in because the youtube audience especially if you're creating video for online purposes short attention span. Mm -hmm. If you lose them in the first 20 seconds, they're probably not, you know, not, not coming back. Lost. Not coming back. Right, right. So al along these same lines, um, how, how should folks share video 
this other than just having it live on their own website or on YouTube? Are there other ways that um, that you would suggest getting it out there um, beyond beyond those two you know, given platforms? So, um, I mean, the Flipshare software that comes with Flip Video allows you to upload directly to YouTube, Facebook. A lot mm -hmm. of people are watching video on Facebook mm -hmm. now. The HD video that comes from these opens up in this big player on Facebook, so right. it's really nice looking. Um, I think Facebook is a great place also for, it's, it's one space for like fan uploads and things too, so you can have sort of a video conversations. Right. As you could, you can respond on YouTube channels too with a video response. Um, and then there's private sharing, mm -hmm. you know, through email that you can use through Flipshare. Um, but online, that you know, videos live online now with embed codes and stuff. Right. I think, personally, I think you could spin this around a million times of Vimeo versus Blip TV versus Two Mobile versus sure. Facebook versus YouTube. But if you put it up on an online platform that allows for resharing, and it's good people will find ways to share with everybody else. I, I, I wouldn't spend too much time figuring out what's the ideal platform right. for releasing the video. That's okay. my two cents. I, I think that the, the point is, I mean, unless you're Barack Obama or Bono or something like that, the mentality of if you build it, they will come is kind of not the best for no, nonprofits. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to want to embed that video <laughs> any possible place you can. So in the same way that you might shoot a link to your uh, most recent press release to a blogger, you want to shoot a video link to them as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I've seen nonprofits create video press releases. If you've done kind of a video project um, where you have interviews with a bunch of different people from around the country that support your cause, you can mash that up into a nice little clip and it's ready to go you know you can basically say hey do you have 30 seconds of airtime shove this in there especially for local press who yeah. are really looking for stuff to fill airtime right. um sometimes these new kind of um like video campaigns can really um fill what they need great great um, so here's another conversation that came up in, in breakfast this morning. I, I swear some of you must have been there watching us. Um, but, but this question comes from the live chat. Um, folks are wondering in terms of measuring the impact of a video on YouTube, what is considered to be a good number um, of views? Are there other metrics that, that people should be focused on? And, and what's the best way to, uh, to, to calculate those things? So the tool that I was talking about over breakfast is, is a tool called YouTube Insight, and you can access that from your YouTube account. Um, basically, it'll give you not only the number of views of each of your videos, but it'll also tell you over time, you know, when when people started watching your video, when they stopped watching mm -hmm. your video, which I was saying can be very painful um, <laughs> uh, uh, for some people, you know, if it's, if it's a certain person's face when they, when they left the video. Um, it'll also give you demographic info about who's watching your video. Um, so you can make sure you're actually reaching the audience that you want to reach. Like, if, I used to work for a youth organization, and, you know, if we found out that only 50-year-olds were watching our video, probably not hitting that right mm -hmm. demographic. Um, but yes, I mean, there are multiple metrics. So views are probably the most common, but um, you can measure, if you have a call to action overlay, you can measure the click-through rate on that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also look at your, you can link it to your Google Analytics um, if, you ha if you're part of the nonprofit program and have a branded channel. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of match clicks and, and views. That's great. And I wanted to just shout out to Michael Hoffman over at C3 Communications yes. because um, he talks a lot about this. And I think one thing that um, he helped me think a lot about is, so you have a video that has, you know, when your video has 2,000 views and then 4,000 views and 10,000 views, it's pretty exciting. But this goes back again to what's the goal of the video. If you, if you may only be sending it to 50 donors, and if you're tracking that those, all 50 donors watched it from beginning to end, um, then maybe your video is an absolute success with only 50 views, like mm -hmm. an utter success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Good like point. a 100% uh, view rate. Whereas um, I know it's, nonprofits can create like a funny 30 second clip of a cat falling off of the roof and say, you know, we're helping <laughs> cats or whatever. And maybe it gets 100,000 views, but mm -hmm. if no one's donating to the organization, right. if people are just forwarding it and making jokes about I think it. that's a great point. It, it's, 
you can't necessarily track it just with uh, right. views. How so, does it meet your specific goals? Right. Exactly. What are your goals? Exactly. exactly. So connecting it to deeper action and, and getting people to, to take that next right. step, right. whether it's donating or um, that's that's fantastic. So what um, before we, we move off of that, it's the insight tool. It, um, so how, how do folks find that? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, if you go to YouTube, you'll see your username when you're logged in in the upper right hand corner. Um, on our new web page, it's a drop down menu. It'll say account. Click mm -hmm. on that, and insight will be linked to right from that page. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, turning to chat again, uh, any thoughts on using video for public relations outreach? I know that um, you talked about um, some people are using video for press releases. Um, do you have good examples of, of how to how to leverage that? Um, I mean, at my old nonprofit, we basically did that. We packaged up pe uh, young voters talking about, um, uh, you know, what they were, what issues they were that were driving them to the polls that year, mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, we sent it around um, as a YouTube video. And I think Fox News had some time in their in their broadcast, so they kind of stuck it in there. Um, it, it, I would just treat it in the same way that you treat other PR. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's it's not a text medium it's a video medium mm -hmm. it's richer mm -hmm. in a lot of ways um but but that that concrete communications background that people on your your staff have should be put to good use um you know just because we're using new tools doesn't mean that all that knowledge from traditional communications goes out the window right. yeah yeah i agree with that and um you know press releases how does that fit into the, the big picture of things right now when you're talking about a, a small nonprofit organization on a shoestring budget or mm -hmm. something like that? Are you going to get picked up by the New York Times? Are you going to get picked up the Wall Street Journal? No, but are you going to get picked up by a local blogger that loves your video that might spread it out sure. to a lot of different people and you're going to get a lot of views on that? Um, uh, Tom's Shoes, I think they yep. do a lot of great videos. Um, just real quick stuff about, hey, this is what we're doing and this is this is the visual of a pair of shoes and someone without a pair of shoes. Right. Sort of things like that, which, you know, it doesn't fit into the press release box, um, but it's getting press for the organization. That's great. Um, so one of our viewers wants to know, do you have any tips for making challenging topics like cancer, AIDS, et cetera, more lighthearted? Um, and that, that's often very challenging. I mean, mm -hmm. I think nonprofits, it's not all sunshine and lollipops. And um, you know, many nonprofits are dealing with some very meaty, uh, challenging issues. So what are, what are some of the ways that, that you've seen um, successful video around those? Um, an example that immediately pops to mind um, is the Sean Kemmerling Testicular Cancer Foundation who made a, if you've never heard a testicular cancer ditty, um, this <laughs> might be your first, but it's all about, it's a really funny video, um, it, it's a little sing-along, um, but the, the main point of it is to, to check yourself for testicular cancer, mm -hmm. um, obviously went hugely viral on YouTube. Um, so that's one example. I mean, and then on a more serious note, like I don't think it necessarily has to be funny, but I think that there are ways to inject hope into videos mm -hmm. without saying like, you know, this child will die if you don't donate now. Um, and I mentioned Invisible Children before, but I really do think that that tone of hope when talking about a war-torn region in Uganda is injected into their videos. So I would use that as an example. Again, very high budget though, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and I would say again, I'm always on the very lowest budget, <laughs> personal level. Thing. That's yeah. why it's a good, uh, a good combination. Um, <laughs> is we we all know somebody that we we've, we've all have someone in our circle that has been has had cancer mm -hmm. or that has been afflicted by one of these diseases or that has gone through one of these tough things. Think about those people and think: Are they sad, miserable people all the time? There's personalities behind that, and they're funny, charming, loving beautiful, interesting people behind all of those stories. Mm -hmm. Share those stories. Just because someone has cancer doesn't mean that they're not funny or they're not charming or they're not sweet. And that's an interesting story to tell. Like so-and-so has lung cancer and has been battling and just got a chemotherapy and you film them and they tell a joke or their beautiful sort of spirit comes out mm -hmm. in a video and you're addressing the issue in an honest way. You're bringing it to the surface. But it's not all feeling sorry and, and hopeless. It's mm -hmm. it's real. It's real people, and I think people appreciate 
being confronted with this sort of real people situation. Sure. Uh, along those lines, this is not pegged to a nonprofit by any means, but I found a couple of users on YouTube who were vlogging their cancer stories. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and one of, one guy, he goes all the way through remission. Um, but one of his videos is called Puke Time. It's literally a video of him puking into a bucket. It's, it's disgusting. But, like, if you want to see real cancer, like, hello, right. puke time. Yeah. Um, those, are, those are some very, those are some great examples. So I, I hope that that is helpful for the person who's, who's writing about that. Um, we have another viewer who says that they get hung up on technical issues. Is there a good online forum to find answers to specific tech questions uh, for creating videos? And I don't know whether that's something that, that you all produce um, or if there are other sites that you could point people to with really good resources. Um, so... I mean, I've been producing video for a long time, and I think I haven't yet found it. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's, it's just when you talk about technology, there, there are a million different iterations. What camera are you using? What software are you using? What mm -hmm. firmware are you using? What, you know, what version of your operating system is it? Is it, are you using what editing software? What are you trying to compress to? Is it what codec are you? I mean, there are so many nuances. So I would say learn how to search mm. well for exactly what you're saying. Say, flip minnow HD having trouble compressing for YouTube <laughs> into your search. And then that's how I find the majority of my answers. Yeah. Because I don't think there's, I haven't found yet one forum that addresses all of those issues mm -hmm. where people are immediately addressing questions back and forth. Um, for flip video questions, uh, the flip video Facebook page is now doing Tech Tuesdays, which okay. we give feedback on on flip video issues. So that's one place to go. Um, but n no, in terms of the holy grail of video tech solutions, um, on YouTube, I mean, we have a creators corner blog, which interviews a lot of popular users and users who are doing things well about what's your favorite camera. Um, you know, how do you edit in, in different lighting situations, really things that video content creators might want to know um, through kind of a YouTube lens as well. So that's the, the creator's corner blog. You can and up. just jump in really quick. The mm -hmm. one thing I would say too is if you're in that situation, keep scaling back until you don't have those problems. Mm. Like for example, Flipshare has editing software. It's very basic, but scale back to where is you can create a video from beginning to end without having problems and then step up to the next level because if you're in, encountering a lot of technical issues try to keep parring back until maybe you just do a one-shot video where you record you you script it all out very well you know exactly what you want to say it's you record you stop it's one minute and you upload that feel some success along the right. way because you can get caught up in never getting to production, uh -huh. never getting anybody to see things. So start by actually getting something out and then you can step up the complexity from there. Sure, sure. So uh, speaking about editing, um, one question that came in via email is if we don't have access to or budget for professional video producers, um, how can we make something that's still engaging? So what, what would be your top tips for, for editing um, raw footage or um, the, the video into a compelling piece? I mean, initially use free, whatever you can get for free, mm -hmm. free software. Macs all come with free video editing software. PCs all come with free video editing software. Flipshare has free video editing software. Use what you've got. Um, because I think it's it's interesting that people always want sort of the best, like the trickiest. I, want Final, I know Final Cut Pro is going to make the best video. And the truth is, uh, in the creative world, having constraints really helps hone your project and create the best possible project. Mm -hmm. um, so any of these programs have their constraints. Like, well, I want a this kind of dissolve where everything explodes off the screen. Well, it doesn't have that dissolve. Mm. So how do you make a good video tell a good story with just these tools? Well, yeah. well I, I also think that, that that's kind of why we created the Video Volunteers Program right. to, to, to match organizations that don't have the access or the resources to get kind of professional video production um, but to find those people who are kind of doing that in their spare time because it's a passion project for them. 
Um, so linking up with those organizations uh, or, or those people that are organically on the site um, might be valuable for your organization. You can find out more at uh, youtube.com slash video volunteers, and we're actually kicking off our climate change round tomorrow. Great. So. Great. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that while you're like sure? Um, so this round we did we did we focused on global development, and yesterday was the homepage spotlight. So we had a video from uh, Jeremy Piven and mm -hmm. the One Campaign, and then three videos from YouTube users on behalf of uh, organizations that they just kind of came in organically through the program. And um, you can still take a look at those um, in our you know featured video spotlight section. Um, but they're, they're, I was actually um, amazed by the quality of them from you know, one that features animation to one that I think is really beautiful cinematography. I think you'd be surprised by the types of people who are willing to do this kind of stuff for free or may actually have this footage taken from a trip to like Ethiopia uh -huh. that may work on behalf of your organization without you even knowing it. It might be sitting in their basement somewhere. Um, so uh, that's one thing. And then for climate change, um, we're actually working with Alcor this month. And um, mm -hmm. so same deal, you know, find, um, uh, you can sign up at video uh, youtube.com slash video volunteers to find someone to make a video for you um, mm -hmm. if you're a climate change organization. Right. So uh, that actually, so you, you mentioned Jeremy Piven and yeah. Al Gore and, you know, you mentioned Bono and Barack Obama. What happens if you don't have a celebrity? And um, I, I had a question that came in via email that said, how can I get celebrities interested in doing a video for my organization? Are there other techniques you think are equivalent to celebrity um, to, to celebrities in creating an attention-grabbing video? So, what are what are some of those compelling things if you don't have access to one of those folks? <laughs> I would ask: Have you ever heard of Fred or Lisa Nova or the Vlog Brothers or any of these people? They're at, or or Ryan Higa. They may not be celebrities in your book, but they have millions of subscribers on YouTube. They're these, you know. Fred is going to have a Nickelodeon movie, you know, they're, they're these people that have kind of sprung up organically from the community, and they are, I would argue, far more influ influential on YouTube than Brad Pitt. Um, so, you know, uh, a great example, Lisa Nova got involved in their video volunteers program. Um, we linked her up with the International Rescue Commission. She has never, you know, she has never put a video on the homepage, but now these IRC videos she's making get 200,000 views just because her fans love her so much mm -hmm. that they're willing to, you know, try anything. And so, and, 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 and you can talk to Kate from the IRC. I think it's been a really, really successful partnership between the two of them. That's great. And I think it's interesting, uh, you know, what celebrities bring is, is a, a fan base, an mm -hmm. immediate fan base. So, um, that you can't recreate that. You can't recreate 10 million adoring fans. It's not, it's not like you're gonna make a video that's gonna do that. The one thing I would say is that there are a lot of people probably within your organization or friends that you know that are closet actors, mm -hmm. you know, personalities, people with big personalities. Film some of the people that you know and see who's, who's a little bit larger than life on film, who feels comfortable in front of the camera, who can reach out through that sort of barrier between video screen and people watching on the other side. Uh -huh. I mean, that's how these people got famous on YouTube is they, they have big personality. And I think that's a great point. I think that there is a, um, a tendency to want to put the executive director on camera. Mm. Um, and maybe your executive director is kind of a shy person and not the most effusive. Sure. But maybe you have that person who just won't shut up in meetings, always <laughs> cracking jokes. You know, right. put that person in front of the camera. Right. right. Yeah, whoever it is that, you know, you want as a spokesperson for your organization that's someone that people will want to come back and see. Right. Um, so we are, we're, we're getting towards the, the latter part of our, our time together. I want to encourage people, if you have additional questions, to either just type them in underneath the, the um, video player and um, through the live chat, or you certainly can tweet them. We'll find it if you use the, hash, the hashtag pound case soup. Um, in the meantime, we'll turn back to chat. And um, here's a question. Are there general best practices you'd, re you'd recommend in terms of length of video, style, substance? I mean, you know, we've talked a little bit about that, but you know, I've seen some 30 second clips that are really compelling and then some that are five minutes and you tend to lose people at a certain point. So what, what would you say is kind of that sweet spot or is there a sweet spot? <laughs> I'm short. Short. Uh, for the YouTube audience, I would go shorter than five minutes, shorter than three minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I 
personally, 30 seconds to two minutes, like, if you have, um, if you can split a three minute video up into three one minute videos and make them all work, mm. I, I think the three one minute videos are, because then you've got also three weeks of material, sure. rolling something out each week. If they're tight and catchy, you put your bumpers on the front and the end. Um, but I would actually encourage everyone watching to go to the uh, YouTube, the nonprofit video awards page hmm. and look at those, you know, top 16 finalists. There's some longer ones, there's some shorter ones. Use your best judgment, you know, what, what feels right for the story that you're telling. And again, it gets back to who are you telling the story to? If it's a YouTube audience, you want to keep it short. Here's a question that's kind of a tangent, but I'm just curious. You mentioned bumpers, and mm -hmm. I think you mentioned that this morning too. Oh, what's, what's a bumper? No, I know what a bumper is, but what's the <laughs> easiest way to put? Because I know that a lot of nonprofits are interested in branding. Right. So, like, how do you how do you stick a bumper on easily? Um. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, so for that's all right. <laughs> it's it's basically a title with a logo and some catchy right. something. I mean, so this would be an ideal, actually ideal space to post for uh, video volunteers, because there's a lot of people that went through you know film school or went and took a course at Bayback or mm. another film program. They're getting their hands into motion, motion graphics or After Effects that could build sort of the the intro piece, but. At the end of the day, like the flip video bumper, I actually love because it's so simple. It's just like the sound of the recording, doo -doo, and the flip video logo bumps in, mm -hmm. like bounces down. Mm -hmm. It's sort of an animation. You can also just do that with a logo. Just have Case Foundation music come up, mm -hmm. the logo fades in, the logo fades out. You can do that with any editing program. Great. And I would say it's less important how tricked out that is just that it's consistent. Right. You know, consistent with your brand, and, and so then you're like, oh, all right, I got it. Very cool. Um, so another question that came in, uh, do you think shock value helps or hurts your cause? <laughs> it, that's a personal question. I mean, that's, it's, it's, the, there's a, a saying in the news, when it bleeds, it leads, yeah. kind of thing, and, um, <laughs> Or any news is good news. You know, people right. will, will mm -hmm. put stuff out there that's controversial, and then people are talking about sure. it. And all of a sudden, there's a million people talking about your organization because you said something that shocked people. That's one that you take back to the boardroom, I think, in terms of, you know, how do you want to present yourself right. in the wider world of things? Right. I, I would say nonprofits tend to be overly cautious. Sure. Risk, risk averse, risk, as opposed super to, yeah. Super risk averse, right. especially in the online world where mm -hmm. you have no control anyways. Like, anyone's going to say whatever they want about your organization. And if you post a video, someone's going to comment something good and someone's going to comment something bad. I think nonprofits generally try to avoid that like the yeah, plague like totally. uh -huh. oh my god someone's going to use our logo and then turn it you know <laughs> right. um which is understandable but you, you don't have any control so that's one to let go but in terms of shock value that's core mm -hmm. organizational question I think. and i think that there are ways without shocking to still be a little more risky and and not quite as okay pull the reins um as possible without going to the extreme uh, on that sure Sure. Um, another pretty specific question that came up in chat, do you have recommendations for open source music that I, I'm assuming that, that people would want to use um, in their videos? I don't know if there's a site or some place that you would direct. So my to. favorite so far is Moby does mm. free music for nonprofit organizations, mobygratis.com, I think. Um, and you can, the, he's got a bunch of songs that you just register and as long as you're using it for a nonprofit organization, you can use any of those tracks. Great. Which is cool because they've got it's great, cool. great, um, they're great. They're mm -hmm. like very ambient, uh, theatrical sort of tunes. Um, commons music, you can also look up in Commons, uh -huh. Commons. Uh -huh. And um, royalty free music that you just have to give recommend uh, recognition, recognition to the. Yeah. We have a, a feature on YouTube called Audio Swap where mm -hmm. you can go to yeah, edit right. video and you can swap out the music that you may have used that you may not want to use anymore mm -hmm. for. Um, cleared music. Okay. And does that swap the whole audio track or just? I think it swaps the whole audio track. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Um, 
so I, I really, this has been a, a great, um, you know, a, a great way to kick off our, our case soup um, segments here and, and our first session. Um, so I really wanted to thank Ramya, thank Basho for joining us. Um, we actually, I, I wanted to, before we wrap up, if there are any closing words of wisdom that, that you have for the folks who are, who are still tuned in, um, we'd love to, to give you the, the floor for another minute and... Um, and take us out. Wisdom fashion. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Um, and, and the video front, I say, just just start shooting. Go shoot something. Practice. Review it yourself. You know, watch it on your computer. Download it to a private channel even. Watch it with your colleagues. But don't get caught up on the final product. Start making it because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to see what looks great, what looks bad, what your voice is, how you want to produce. And it's not until you understand those sort of pieces that you can then say, oh, you know what, this is really easy to do, and this goes right along with this campaign that we're doing. Mm -hmm. I see how video fits in. Um, everyone has a concept of what doing video is, but very few people have sort of the practical knowledge and experience. So start shooting and start watching it, and shoot two minute pieces, one minute pieces, do right. lots of those. It and in conjunction with that, I would say st start shooting, but I think watching is important too. Yeah, sure. So spend 10 minutes a day, you know, watching YouTube videos, figure out what you like on the site, what right. makes you laugh, what makes you cry, um, and then and then see if you can take elements of that yeah. and put it. A, a great example of this is, um, so uh, there was the video, the Che Wedding Dance. Mm -hmm. Many of you probably <laughs> saw it. Um, and that was a Chris Brown song. Um, the... Uh, a hospital uh, in Canada, I think, actually, or no, Washington, actually created a, a very similar feeling video um, called the Pink Glove Dance, where people are dancing for breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. um, to a very similar sounding song. Um, but they took that video right out of the, the JK Wedding playbook and then got <laughs> probably the most successful nonprofit video I've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, so uh, look at the playbook. I mm -hmm. mean, people are, are succeeding out there and Imitation, best form of flattery. Right. Yeah, definitely. Right. No, absolutely. And and along those lines, as we mentioned at the top of the show, um, the Do Gooder Video Awards program um, just just wrapped up, um, but it's now open for public vote. So we would encourage everybody not only to go and check out some of the most effective nonprofit videos that have been identified, but also to, to vote for your favorite. So I think that that's a really um, a great way to kind of immerse yourself um, in, in what's happening in, in terms of nonprofit video. So Again, I want to thank Basho, uh, thank Ramia. This has been a, a terrific um, time. I hope that it's been of value to everybody who's tuned in. Um, and I want to encourage everybody to uh, visit the Case Foundation site and um, watch for upcoming episodes of Case Soup, where we'll be serving up a streaming cup of good. Thanks so much, and uh, have a great day, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks.